listening to Read Me, a live podcast about everything related to books and reading. Hi, it's your host Dream with the first ever episode of the live Read Me podcast. Our topic of today is Reading is Expensive and Illegal in Algeria, featuring an interview with Elwisa Al Arabi Edition, aka Book Point in Algeria. I'd like to personally thank them for answering my questions related to the topic of today which I'm going to just to talk about just in a bit and I also want to thank you our listeners for joining in. I'm going to split this podcast into three or four into four uh, parts and let's jump right into the first one in which I am going to talk about why books are expensive like in Algeria. Now, while doing the research and finding all these about why some books are expensive, I stumbled upon this uh, survey that was done in 2018 by the new publishing standard.com. Uh, it was done um, on people visiting the annual Algerian book fair, aka SILA, which is unfortunately being cancelled this year because of COVID-19. And they found out that 90% of those visitors prefer physical books and only 10% likes to read ebooks. They don't have a problem with those. And among those 90%, uh, they found out that 19.7% of them prefer English books. Now, which leads us to why books are expensive. Because the English book is not printed here. That's just the first reason for why it makes it so expensive, for instance, to get your hand on a copy of The Fault in Our Stars. Mind you, The Fault in Our Stars came out years ago and you are still out here getting it with 1800 to 2500 dinars, um, which a lot of us don't have that kind of money to spend on a regular basis, which make it even more stressful for you as a reader wanting to support your favorite author or get the... You know the book that is like the talk of the town or the talk of the internet right now you will feel left out just because you don't have money just because that book is damn expensive and just because it is imported imported inside their country and not uh, printed here and before I go any further I want to clarify that in order for a publishing house here in the country to have the right to print that book, they need to buy those printed rights. It's not just like, come on, let's find uh, a book and just print it and nobody will find out. There is regulations and uh, you need to protect the author, the rights of the author, the rights of the publisher, the right of the dis- distributor and all those people they need to be uh, protected uh, now another thing which makes books uh, expensive is that the currency the dinar isn't the strongest currency out there and yeah just a basic transaction is uh, you can do right now on your phone or after this episode ends. Don't do it now. Keep on listening. <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and just say, what is one dinar equals in uh, euros, for instance, or dollars? Believe me, it's nothing. It, it doesn't even translate in those currencies. But one uh, euro uh, equals around 200 dinars some in the black market, mind you. In the black, I'm talking about the black market because the bank market is doesn't translate for you, uh, for anybody, because uh, there is a regulation 
the country puts on how much uh, foreign currency enters the country uh, every person who would like to have a foreign currency on his or her on their hand they need only a hundred euro a year I'm not sure if that uh, has been um, you know changed or not but as far as I'm concerned only a hundred euro is allowed for you you have to have a passport by the way and you have to leave the country you can just you can just um, you know exchange the dinars with that currency and stay inside the country you have to have somewhere to go so nobody is leaving here so that's another problem and a no-no you can't have that uh, so that's reason number two for you uh, books are imported and the dinner is basically nothing and the most important thing for and this is has more to do with the um, book sellers and bookstores uh, they have these people when they have the book inside the bookshop they pay taxes not all of them are the one who import the book from uh, outside that is few so that person who imports the books has to pay taxes on those books and the uh, when he distributes or those books those this the people that bought the book from him they have also to pay taxes on those so it is a vicious cycle and uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, how and why uh, this whole debacle occurs Basically, the book is not treated as a, a book, something you get knowledge from and you just have. The book uh, are, is treated as a any other product or good. Uh, so, for instance, have weapons, for in, firearms, drugs, alcohol. So, they treat it as those products. So you have the taxes. If you go on the Ministry of Culture website, you will find all the listings. Or just go to the uh, uh, American Embassy website, you will find what is not taxed and what is taxed. And basically books fall into that list of taxed goods. Like they treat them just like any other stuff so these are just three examples that I can come up with that suffice why your book is expensive why a regular copy a paperback for that not a hardback for the 14 hour stars you can go for 1800 to 25 sometimes even more if you are dealing with another uh, bookstore or another bookseller I, I noticed in the past there were scarce bookstores because there was not an, a lot of them so the prices were just shoot up to three thirty hundred or something it's it, it's madness now that i talked about some of the reason that makes books uh expensive uh i would lead up to the um, my interview for with the uh, Elwisam Larabi, we talked about what makes uh, books expensive, what makes some dealings of your books uh, illegal, actually, which is my most important, I think, point in the whole uh, this. And for you, you are telling probably this and, this and telling yourself, okay, it is expensive, so I'm just gonna not buy a physical book and I'm just gonna go for an ebook. Okay, fine. The ebook can be cheaper and easier to get hold of. But do you have access to foreign money to pay on Amazon to have a Kindle? Uh, just the other day, by the way, I had somebody ask me uh, whether I know how they can get a Kindle and sign up for Amazon uh, so that they can have actually just right off the bat get rid of this whole problem so they can have access to book and i was like no i don't know i would love if i knew and 
there is also another this is another block for reader or anybody who likes to buy on the internet you have to have a middle guy uh, who has access to a visa card because i bet you like 95 percent of algerian don't have that a visa card that just you can just go in on the internet and buy whatever you want that's not uh, a thing it's really disheartening really uh, yeah I would like to first before I talk about what what makes you for instance get your hands on a, a PDF is illegal and why is that and why I'm tell, making such a claim or making a reading um, like getting a PDF is just one of it I'm getting ahead of myself I would like to go through my questions and answer for the interview I had with the uh, uh, Bissam Larabi, I asked them in total 14 questions. Like, first of all, I only prepared like five, I think, or seven questions, and I was debating between the two, but the conversation was juicy <laughs> and I had to go for more uh, questions just because I wanted to know more. I want to get the scoop for you, and that's why. Uh, this podcast could go for an extra 15 minutes let's go through these questions the first the first question i asked was when did you open your bookstore and they say since 1968 as a general bookstore and since 2009 it has become an english bookstore they only sell english books so don't go there harassing them about french books okay it is our bookstore and we finally have somewhere to buy uh english books okay just just getting that out there uh question number two what is the best thing about owning a bookstore for english books the answer was feeding the hunger of english readers in algeria satisfying the english students needs in terms of the literary works that are scheduled in the university curriculum opening a wide window on what's newly published and read worldwide as english is nowadays an international language question number three what's the worst thing or hardest about uh, here i meant about owning a bookstore or english bookstore in the country they say having customers complaining for not finding french books instead that's what i was just talking about bringing english books in particular is a challenge in itself amid the french hegemon uh, hegemony i can never say this word anyway uh, question number four we all know that in, here in the country like uh, most of people uh, read in French or have French as they speak it as a third language because the uh, the or uh, the official languages are Arabic, Amazigh, and third French. So most of people read in French, talk French, uh, or just in on a daily basis we throw in a word of, of French here and there. Uh, so that's that question number four why books are so expensive in general and here I'm trying to f get a little bit of uh, insight into what I was just talking about they said because among some countries Algeria imposes taxes and VAT on books and also because our currency is cheap compared to the hard currency so basically that's what I was talking about and you can do more research, by the way, on this. Fall into that rabbit hole. Question number five. What did the Ministry of Culture do to help? Have you or your other competitors received any moral or financial support? The answer was the support needed should be by easing the procedures and restrictions on books that's it you guys that's literally what we want we want you to ease out on those rigid uh procedure you do on books like it is and canon and heard of on 2020 like we are in the 21st century the ministry of education culture and religion need to ease up a little bit 
It is just books. We are just needing to read. It's not that deep. Trust me. Question number six. Can you elaborate more on what kind of restrictions? Answer. Economically speaking, it is a complicated issue in terms of the banking system, the import and export laws, etc. Here they did not specify anything and I didn't want to answer more questions about this. Um, but you can go ahead and ask, ask them that yourself in the comments. Uh, they will be seeing this. Question number seven. Do books have to be approved? Like you have someone who says which books can and can't get through. The answer is, of course, it's by consent. When we bring books, we should submit the list in the Ministry of Culture to go through every single title, whether it is allowed or not. Question number eight. Do you mind sharing which books, topics, covers get denied or disapproved and here is that is the uh, the book by Salman Rushdie satanic verses for instance um, in Arabic and this title was particularly banned by the Ministry of Religion because uh, during doing my research I found out that most of religious texts that uh, contradict the Algerian uh, uh, method of religion I'm lost for words here sorry uh, do not get into the country and people who are researching in that are blocked from getting them anyway uh, question number nine are you aware of the fake or counterfeited book market how does that affect you the answer was oh that's our nightmare because it's heartbreaking that some booksellers resort to such rights violation in the pretext that the English book market is empty. We strive and work hard and travel worldwide and attend business meetings to bring original authentic books from the source, while others around the corner are printing out and distributing fake copies and in high prices. And I, this I want to talk about a little bit later on. Question about, uh, number 10. What do you have to say to those who sell and buy fake books? Answer. They should admit that it is a theft and they often deceive the customers by pretending having original copies. They should stop such a crime because it's illegal. Uh, question number 11. Top selling book or author? Answer in Algeria, best selling books or best sellers don't count always on the current worldwide ones. In Algeria, best sellers are Jane Austen, Stephen King, J.K. Rowling, Malala, John Green, Eckhart Tolle, and George R. R. Martin. Question number 12 I assume people who buy books are solely young ones, right? Is that correct? Online, most of them are young as social media is just being used by them. So most of people who buy uh, books from the bookstore are young people. Question number 13. If you can do things over, what's one thing you do differently? Um, you mean if I can change something as far as English books in Algeria are concerned? I would ease the restrictions on books in general and recommend the concerning ministers to engage in the distribution and instill it, instilling the habit of reading, starting by children in schools and educational bodies. Question number 14. Are you planning to add other services like subscription boxes, merch, book tote bags, and etc.? They said yes, of course, we always thought of bringing such stuff and accessories. We haven't got the chance, that's why. So, these were the questions and their answers. Right now, I just want to comment a little bit about what has been said for my next topic, which is why reading is illegal. And now, I said that bold uh, statement because, yes, the PDF you are reading, sharing with friends, 
is illegal. If you send send you a PDF or you sent a PDF, you downloaded a PDF, let that let that now be known that it is an illegal and no downloading rec random PDF is not illegal because here's the thing uh, there is a free PDF that you can download here's the author is giving you the right to do so uh, what I'm talking about is m the most of it which is happening the author didn't or the publisher the, or the distributor did not give you the right for that PDF downloading so this is number one and uh, the other um, thing uh, which make reading is illegal uh, which they talked about here in their questions is buying a fake or counterfeited book you guys uh, this thing really bothers me like you are you are causing a lot of problem if you're living in land now and you say oh my god nobody's gonna know and I'm saying, they're going to know. And you say, how would they know? And it's like, they're going to know. Trust me. First thing you you maybe tell yourself, oh my God, I'm not hurting anybody. It's just me. But it's not just you. There is a whole bunch of people. Like, I would dare say, 10 of thousands of readers getting a PDF and just reading it. A PDF without buying the book the actual book and spending that money that's the first thing scamming buyers now let's say you bought a physical copy of the book and that physical copy is if the price is too good to be true like for instance you want a copy of the new Sarah J Mass book for instance and it is ten hundred meter that's that's not a, a good call that's a scam that's not just the real price for that book you so here you are being scammed as a buyer because why if you even if you tell yourself it's okay i know uh it's cheap and it's scammed get what guess what you might receive the book and you may not like people may take your money and just will deactivate that account and never apply to you never send you the book or they just send you random copy like fall the pages falling out uh misprinted pages missing so now you spent that money but you did not get the book you wanted so you you got scammed the second thing about buying these fake copies is taking royalties from the authors so as i said before the author the publisher uh have the royalty rights for those uh, books because it's theirs and i just want to say this thing happened to sarah uh no not sarah, cassandra claire lately when her new book she did this giveaway for five uh, manuscript or arc something like that I think the original and she gave physical copies to five winners and when people got those books one of them scanned everything and just put it in the internet and people kept downloading that and just reading the book and I think that's the um I don't know which book, maybe it is a really published book or going to be published book. I'm not sure. You have to do that, uh, some research on that. But here's the, see, this is the problem. People are going to scam you and yeah, they scam the author, which is the other point. The author doesn't get that money of you buying a fake copy. That money goes into the pocket of the uh, the scammer. Now, you don't need me to tell you ways to spot fake books. You can Google that and you can find tons of articles and videos on how to spot a fake uh, copy. But you, you're telling yourself, I can't... Uh, 
happen. I don't know how. Like I buy the book on the internet. And I would tell you first thing that you look for is if the price is too good. As I was saying before. If the price is too cheap and you're just going for it. Uh, you have to double check yourself. Whether that book is let's say uh, a fake copy or a used copy. You need to ask questions. You need to ask for uh, real pictures of the book uh, maybe the quality of the paper we know that uh, the scammer usually use random white paper which is looks horrendous by the way uh, the book width and thickness you know the size of the book I think uh, overall the quality and y you would know uh, sometimes the uh, the pages are falling out it's it just it's a mess it is a half mess uh, which this will lead me to something that actually I'll, I'll be honest with you I'm afraid to talk about uh, and I don't want to talk about just because I don't have enough information to support my claims I didn't do that much of research about this one because it can take another episode just to discuss this one which is book censorship and this thing actually happened in i think 2015 for a writer uh i have the quote i would like to read it for you so book fair organizers said the ban was to keep publications in line with the events policy but one algerian author walid belkbir whose book Arab Spring postponed in Algeria, said it showed the unofficial taboo on discussing such uprisings. We decided to seize 106 books, including this one that speaks about Arab Spring because they did not respect the editorial line of the book fair. Book fair uh, general manager Hamidou Masoud said. So basically in 2015 there was like censorship, I think until now, about talking about the Arab Spring and alluding to the Algerian one coming and all that you are not allowed to talk about that this is just one example of censorship censorship and i would love to hear from people who know books that been censored or people who their book got censored contact me i would like to know about the experience because i'm kind of nosy about this one and i want to know so there you go you guys i laid your my topic of today for you why the books are expensive and what makes them which makes reading in general seem illegal so these are certain things that you cannot do okay and there is also ways to stop uh, the book piracy and uh, to combat those uh, fraud people or counterfeiters the question I know you are asking yourself right now is Reem if I can't get a PDF and the paperback book is or the original book is very expensive and so out of my uh, budget, what can I do? Hmm? You are asking that question right now and maybe some of you are angry. Some of you checked out already like, oh my God, she's looking down at us guys trust me i'm not i'm wholeheartedly just i'm coming in a, from a point of i'm not going to bullshit you and say that i didn't read pdf at some point in my life because i did and i really consumed them especially i remember in uh in my year of last year of master like yeah, 99% of the books I used for that research, even the novel I conducted my research on, was a PDF. I did not pay for them. I just downloaded them on the internet. I'm going to be true with you. I did it up until, I think, 2016. I still did it because I did not realize 
what danger I am causing or why. I, I thought if the book existed on the internet, uh, on this site or that site, it is, well, okay to just download it and give it a read and nobody is the wiser. But I did, like, I think I watched many videos talking, people talking about why it is wrong. And some of the reason I just laid to you here on this podcast. And I came to that realization that I put myself really in the shoes of others. What I would like things to be, uh, what I liked something to be done. And yeah basically everything that I just said. As for solutions or ways to combat this and you know you see yourself or people like me, I'm guilty of this, Uh, every now and then I have a booktube channel, I publish book hauls and show off books and tell you like oh my god I got this I'm all excited you are following many people who do that and you want to be them. I was there, I'm still there. I watch people post book hauls and consume them and I'm just I feel this envy and I want to be them. And it kind of falls down to consumerism and I don't want to just dive into it right now because that will take me another 30 minutes. Uh but that actually is the topic of my next episode so if you want me uh, if you want to hear me talk about consumerism uh, on booktube or actually not just in general on us here on actually like tight knit uh, a little bit of all that and i will i am actually i've started doing massive research for some of the resources i want you to get through uh, to get to and so they will help you find cheaper affordable books original books most importantly because you are supporting uh, authors bookstores independent bookstores and just used bookstores and all those so I need just to get the list out before I start talking about that I need to carry on on this research so if you want to listen to that and get your hands on all those information make sure to tune in next month on the last friday of uh, october to hear me talk about it Uh, as a final point i want to thank you for listening i want to thank my guest for answering my question you were so kind Thank you. I would like to have you on other episodes, like virtually, not just me uh, retelling your uh, answers. And go ahead and follow me on all my social media if you want to learn more and want to connect with me. I'll be happy to answer your questions if you have further. And yeah, this is me signing off. Thank you so much. I'll see you next episode. Have a good day. Bye.